We're going to have some more singing, but we're going to move right along quickly this morning. Uh, we've got bus kids back there in the junior church, and, and they'll, they'll tear the walls down in a little while. They'll, they'll kill you after a while. So uh, we'll get right into Scripture today. Don't miss the service tonight. Be here. Bring somebody with you. Bible school, the 13th, 14th, and 15th. We're excited about that. Our theme is water. We're going to be studying what the Bible says about water. Do you know the water is mentioned over 700 times in the Bible? Uh, we're going to learn what it's for, what it's used for, what it's a type of, what it can do. And then we're going to have water sports out here. So you don't want to miss Bible school. Don't matter how old you are. If you've got teenagers or kids, get them in this Bible school. It's going to be fun. And we're really excited about that. A lot else I could talk about this morning. Uh, uh, appreciate y'all praying for my family, Dax and them over yonder. The Lord did keep him safe. And he is a national champion. Uh, his age group, I ain't bragging about that because I want the Lord to do something for him in his life. I'm just glad he kept him safe. And they'll be, they'll be traveling home today. Uh, others, uh, Brother Wayne's been sick. Jeremy's having to work up north. Uh, Brother Derek's gone down yonder. Uh, the other families are gone. Let's remember them in prayer today. Today, let's remember them in prayer. Now, this morning in Ephesians chapter 4, I want to look at a verse of Scripture here today, and I want you to look at it. I'm going to do a little bit different than I normally do, just a little bit different. I usually just rear back and haul off and preach on Sunday morning, but I'm going to slow down just a little bit and sort of teach a little bit today, so you'll need to stay with me for the first few minutes. Ephesians 4, verse 27 is what I want to preach about. But I want you to hold your Bibles open because I'm going to read a bunch more. That verse said, neither give place to the devil. Now, I'm going to preach this morning on the subject, giving place to the devil. Giving place to the devil or how not to. Now, if we're going to not give place to the devil, the few verses before that and after that, I would be much interested in, in what the Lord was saying. So if you don't want the devil to get in your life or in your house or in your home, it's bad enough when the devil sneaks in. It's bad enough when the devil tricks his way in. For heaven's sake, don't give him a seat. Amen? Amen. Somebody said to the woman come to church one night, she said, oh, pray for me, preacher, the devil's been riding me all week. She come next Sunday, pray for me, preacher, the devil's been riding me all week. Come next Sunday, Lord, pray for me. He said, I ain't praying for you. Quit furnishing him a saddle. Yeah. <laughs> don't give the devil a seat if you don't want him in your house. Don't make a place for him. Don't sit down and say, uh, here, devil, would you like to have a seat? Now, look, the devil is pictured as a serpent. If I, hold your Bibles over now, if I leave this door open all night tonight, like that right there, something's going to get in here. There's possums out here trying to get in trash. There's raccoons coming out here trying to get in trash can. There's rats for sure. There's snakes. We've killed them. There's bears. Somebody said, see one come down the hill there. Uh, right out here to our trash cans. So if I leave that door open, something's going to get in here. Right? The, how are we going to keep stuff out of here? Here's how you got to do it. If I don't want nothing to come in here, I want the door shut good and tight. You know why some folks have always got the devil in their life? They won't shut them doors. You won't shut the door. You don't shut the door, guess who's going to come in? Mom used to sing that song, open my door and the flies come in, shut the door and I'm sweating again. Life gets tedious, don't it? That's an old song. Now, if you're old enough to remember, that's for air condition. Open my door and flies come in. Shut the door and I'm sweating again. Uh, and that's the way it goes. That people, had old, people didn't even have screen doors. So they'd open my door and flies come in. If you open my door or leave, leave a chair in your life, the devil's going to get in there. I don't get, get in your marriage. People say, oh, no, what's happened to my home? You left a door open somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere he snuck in. And it don't take much room. It don't take much room. They say a snake, have you ever seen what's a little crack a snake can crawl through? Lord, they can, they can squeeze their self together and their, whatever they got, ribs or whatever in there, they got a few little bones and they squeeze together and they go through a hole that big and the snake kept big around. And a rat can too. 
a rat can go, a, a big rat, somehow or another they can go through a little hole as big as this microphone stand right here. And the Bible said we're not supposed to give place to the devil. Now anybody that's had a house for a while knows what I'm talking about. If you, if you have a hole under your sink or a crack under the door, they'll come up through your vents, your heat and air conditioning vents. Uh, I mean, Krista, my daughter, uh, back there, she, one, uh, she said, Daddy, there's a rat. And a rat went right through her bedroom and down through the vent. I said, How, where's he going in there? And they had got underneath the house and ate holes in the, in the duct work, the, the, the air conditioned heat system, and they was getting in like that. And you have to have it fixed, and you have to set traps, and you have to, the devil got in there. The devil got in there. Uh, uh, people had snakes in your house. How many of you had a snake in your house before? Anybody here besides me? Yes, sir, buddy. I have, Lord have mercy. I had one getting up at one time. Y'all remember me telling about that? And I never believed that a snake could get in the house, but they can. They can get in. They can. I come home from the hospital one, I mean the post office one day, uh, visiting. I had been out and done some stuff. And I went to the post office and I pulled up and got ready to step and there was a copperhead laying at my back door and his head was up like he's trying to get in the door. That thing was that big around. And I run around here and got the shovel and ran and started hitting him. I killed him right there on the spot. I thought, you know what the Bible says. The only good snake is a dead snake. That's my version I'm gonna write. Uh, uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, they'll get in. They'll get in. And I had one get in the bedroom one time. And somebody, you know what somebody told me? This a long time ago. And I was in there, I was scared to death. And they said, uh, uh, they said a snake get in there, and I thought, I think a snake's been in the house. I don't know what it was. And that thing had been in there, been in there, and it was crawling across the rafters. How it got up there, I don't know. I saw evidence of it. Snake it shed skin. And somebody said, Get mothballs, preacher. Mothballs will run snakes off. I don't know who told you that, but guess what? I was laying in, I, I cut a ladder and climbed up there and put mothballs all the way down through there. I was laying in the bed one night and I heard them mothballs hitting the floor. <laughs> ding, ding. I, oh my goodness. I was, like, <laughs> I was scared. I thought, oh Lord. I pled the blood of Jesus. I done everything in the world. Listen, you know what? They get a hole somewhere and the devil will do the same thing. Let's see how he gets in your life. The few verses before and the few verses after. Here's how to keep the devil out of your home. All right, 22, you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Got that? Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. That means you put off that old man that used, used to be. All right? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, verse 24, which after God is created in righteousness and true, true holiness. Here's another idea, 25. Wherefore putting away lying. A good way to keep the devil out of your life is tell the truth, people. And let every man speak truth with his neighbor, or speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Here's a good one, 26. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. 28. Let him that stole steal no more. If you've been stealing, don't steal no more. You said, I ain't been stealing, preacher. You've been giving your t paying your tithes, ain't you? If you ain't, you're stealing. Um, so don't, don't, don't try to act pious to me. That's where the devil gets in your life. You can sit there and buck all you want to. I'm trying to be your friend and help you. The Lord will bless you if you quit stealing. I, something hit me this week that I'd never even noticed about that verse. Let him that stole steal no more, but let him labor working with his hands. Isn't that weird? That the Lord put stealing and working in the same verse? That means a lot of people who steal are the same ones that won't work. <whistles> Amazing how far ahead that book is, ain't it? Ain't that book something? Nailed it again. Normally, People who steal are people who don't worry. I heard a preacher say years ago, he said, everybody in prison is there trying to get something for nothing. Everybody you meet in prison, they wanted something for nothing. 
Figure out a way to get something without working for it. And if you'll work, you won't, if you don't work, you'll lay around and want this and want that and want this and want that. And that's why you get caught at Walmart and they have to put you in jail. I mean, you know they got cameras in there. You know you can't move without a camera pointing on you. Just a little tip in case you're planning on stealing something this week. And there might be somebody in here who is. Uh, let him that steal, stole, steal no more. Go to work. Get your job. Amen. Ain't no reason a healthy man should starve in America. Not a healthy man. Now, if you're not healthy, we all, everybody ought to help you. But a healthy man has no business starving in this country. All right? Look at here. Look at what else he said. Verse number, oh, the last part of that verse said, work so you can give to somebody that needs it. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. That's a good way to keep the devil out of your home. Uh, but rather, good with the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers. Verse 30, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. There's a good way. Here's another way. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. Do you know what clamor means? There it is in your Bible. You, you, you study your Bible? You do read the Bible, right? You know what clamor means? Just a bunch of racket. Bunch of people fussing and arguing and griping. Madhouse. You ever been in a house like that? Say amen. And evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. If you'll do all those things, you've shut the door. You've sealed up the cracks. I mean, you've took flex seal tape and put it on everything. And you've got that squirt stuff and that uh, foam where you squirt it in them holes and it gets big like that and turns into and seals off the crack. Rats can't get in. Uh, Shut the uh, screen doors and the skeeters can't get in. And, and, and seal up the roach and the cockroaches can't get in. And the, the mice can't get in. And the snakes can't get in. You don't give place to the devil. I mean, uh, uh, it's like, um, like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Listen, this stuff right here, this keeps the devil away. You want the devil to stay out of your life? You do these very things. Now, let's look at these things slow and just name them off right quick and I'll let you go. Number one, he said, put off the old man. Now, we don't understand a lot of times that when you get saved, the old man is reckoned dead. Now, he don't believe that and he don't want to accept that. So he fights you every day. When you get saved, you put on the new man. You put off the old man. What's that mean? All the old habits. All the old. I, I like that song. Said I took off the old coat and put on the new. Like it's like this. And I brought this jacket here and it burned. But, but I want to show you this. This is say my old man right here. This is my old man. And uh, when I before I got saved, this is uh, was my what am I supposed? To, here's my old man. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> Well, James Dean, <laughs> that's what he did. And, he, oh, oh, and you take this old man like this and you walk around like that and here's the old habits, the old music, the old movies, the old wicked, old dirty, filthy, cussing tongue, lifestyle, going to parties, going to places like that, living like the devil. Now, when you get saved, the Bible says you put him off, right? You put off the old man, his habits, his desires, everything, and you put on... The new man, which is after God. You say, well, I've done that, preacher, and I still messed up. Well, here's what you've done. You forgot that tomorrow morning when you get up, the old man's going to come back. You, it's a choice you make every day, every day. You don't just kill the old man, go to the altar, and get right and stay right forever. It don't work like that. Why do you think Paul said, I die daily? I die daily. Daily. Now listen, every morning when I get up, I choose, I choose. Am I gonna put on the old man or am I gonna put on the new man? Just like I put on this, whatever this is, gray, whatever, uh, light, dirty, dirty white. 
uh, I, as long, whatever this is here this morning, and when I put this on, when I put this jacket on, I chose to. Now, you know what I could have done? I could have chose to got this and put, you know, and got a motorcycle and put 666 on the back of this and, and, and rode to Myrtle Beach and let the old man have his way. But I choose, I choose, put on the new man. Read the word of God. Start the day off right. I'm telling you this morning, everybody listening to me? Are you listening? Every morning of your life, you make a choice. Am I gonna let the Lord lead me today? Am I gonna let him work in my life today? Or am I just gonna do what I wanna do? And that's why he said, put off the old man with his deeds, with his desires. Uh, you'll, you'll hear an old song. Uh, you'll hear an old song. That, buddy, that song brings back memories. Oh, my goodness. I was, I was at camp the other day, and right out of the clear blue, I, 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 was, I was cutting up with the kids, and uh, we were singing uh, Tom the Toad and everything, and I got to tell them about how music, you know why it's so important that you listen to the right kind of music? I'll tell you why. Because the wrong kind of music makes you think wrong. If all you listen to is is rock or country music and all they're talking about is committing adultery or getting drunk or partying or I, I lost my heart, she got my heart, she, who's got her heart? It's going around here somewhere. I don't know where my heart went. If that's all you hear, you are not gonna live with the new man. You're putting on the old man. I had this little song, I don't know if I can get it on or not, Andy, but it, 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 I, was, I was playing it at camp. And listen to this, this is, this is not satanic but it's old. This is how it was when I was little. This is how it was when I was little. And it goes like this. I, and I got it cutting up with the kid. She wore an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Preacher! Is that satanic? No. that she wore was the first time we met. She wore a nitty bitty teeny weeny. Now let you know what I'll do. I'll go around singing that three or four days this week. That ain't even, I mean, it's wicked. <laughs> some of y'all look at me like, oh my goodness. Uh, and, and some of them old songs like that, you know, they're not satanic, but they don't make you feel like that old man. I was I singing to him about a little frog and flirting with another frog and had a bikini on. That's what's her. So don't, don't think wicked of me. We was just cutting up. But them, them little songs like that, and I sung that, I sung that last night. People sure act funny when they get a little money. And Carrie and them been gone all week, and they're probably watching right now. She sent me a text. She said, I have sung that song all week long. People sure act funny when they get a little money. Anybody else do that this week? I tell you stuff, and it gets in your head. It's powerful. It's powerful. So every day, every day, I choose, put off the old man. Tomorrow morning when I get up, it'll, it, it'll be there. It'll be there again. You'll go in a store, hear a song, down the road 10 miles, and you're singing that song, patting your foot. When I did them rock music presentations, I preached all over this country and I showed them rock, and I'd be going to preach. And I'd be going to preach saying, Lord, help me, I'm on a highway to hell. I thought, I'm losing my mind, man. They're going to put me in Broughton. I'm, <laughs> and that's exactly what will happen. I pray, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I'm on the highway to hell. I said, I ain't on no highway to hell. I'm going to heaven. But that stuff gets in you. You have to put it off. You have to put it off. You say, well, I ain't seen that movie in a long time. Bump. Put off the old man. Put on the new man. It's a choice you make every day in your life. Listen. If I let that old man have his way, it won't be long till I'll be talking wrong, thinking wrong, and then doing wrong. Y'all listen? It won't be long till you'll be thinking wrong, and then it won't be long you're doing wrong. If you listen to worldly music today, it won't be long till you'll be thinking wrong. 
You say, well, Brother Danny, my goodness, it's, I like it. I just like it. Well, listen, you little brat. You're going to heaven. You're not going to hell. It ain't going to kill you to give up some worldly stuff. Once in a while, it ain't going to hurt us to lay it down and say, dear Lord, I mean, I, I, I go, to, uh, uh, go, go down the road saying victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. How firm a foundation. Ye saints of the Lord is laid for your faith in his excellent word. How, how much more could he do than you he has done? Who for us to Jesus, God gave his son. The best way to drive out that old man is put on that new man. Put on the new man. Number two, he said this. He said this, tell the truth. Tell the truth, y'all. Tell the truth. Amen? Some people have lied their entire life and just live by habit and lie by habit. Listen, when you just lie for no reason at all, you're, you're a liar, buddy. You're in bad shape. Most people, if they're backed into a corner and it's life or death, will sometimes tell a lie or they're tortured or something. And that's wrong. Nobody should ever. But a lot of people, but buddies, I know people that just lie just to be lying. And you know they're lying when you're lying, when they're talking to you. Amen. God wants us to tell the truth. The Bible said the wicked go astray as soon as they're born, speaking lies. I got one little boy that was talking one day and he said, what's the definition of a lie? And, and the little boy said, I go to church, I know all that stuff. He said, what is it? He said, a lie is abomination in the sight of God, but a very present help in a time of trouble. That's right. That's what, and, and listen, if you lie to get out of one thing, you'll lie to cover up that lie. And then you'll lie to cover up that lie. And then you'll tell another lie to cover up that lie. The best way to do is just own up, fess up, man up, tell the truth. One of the things, you know what's wrong with our government? And I ain't got time to get on phone all this this morning. Our government has lied so long. A, a politician gets on and makes promises and he knows he ain't gonna do it. And the thing is, everybody listening to him knows he can't do it or won't do it. We expect them people to lie. That's a sad state that we've got ourselves into. You know, and the news media says, you know, they all lie. That's sad, isn't it? I'll tell you how crooked the government is. You know what a man told me the other day? He'd been served, served some time, been in prison for, for a, a few years. And he said, he said Dan, Brother Danny, you wouldn't believe what they do with the government. He said, the government is so crooked. It is so corrupt. It is so vile. I mean, yeah, that's why you don't have good, godly, dedicated people in office. They can't get elected. You know why? Because they stand for something. If you stand for what's right, you can't get elected. You just have the, whichever the worst, you hope don't get it. And brother, they're, they're, they're so crooked. Here's what he told me. He said, did you know what they've done in prison? He said, I saw it with my own eyes. He said, they get so much money from the, government, the state every year. He said, they'll buy them John Deere tractors and with, the, with, this, with their government, whatever that money is, he said, eight and $10,000 John Deere tractors. Use them one summer and take them out in the van and tear the wheels off of them and shred them up and sell them for scrap metal and trash them so they get more money to buy another one next, more stuff next year. He said, I saw it. He said, you wouldn't believe the stuff because you get money. That's a stimulus money that they pay. That's why they're doing all these work, fixing exits that don't even need to be fixed and putting rocks on the side of them, making them all look real fancy because the government gives you so many millions of dollars and if you don't spend it, you don't get that next time. And brother, our whole country has thought that the way you operate is be a crook. And God said, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Be honest. Don't get quiet on me now. Tell you another one. Verse 26 said, control your anger. Don't be a hothead. Are you known for blowing your stack? The Bible said, anger resteth in the bosom of fools. If you are known to be a hothead, you will have no Christian testimony. You will never accomplish anything. Uh, people get mad. I've, I, I, I've noticed that uh, uh, in, in this generation, social media has really messed us up because of text. You know, you have to be real careful with them text, yeah, especially these stupid phones that won't even let you 
put what you want to put. You start a word and it puts something else on it. You better be careful about that. Some of you nodding your head like you know getting well what I'm talking about. Man, you better read that thing before you push sin. You liable to cuss somebody out and didn't even mean to. And, and especially somebody like me because I talk, I talk, you know, a lot of country slang and, and stuff and hick language. And Lord, you put, when you try to put in words like I say it, it, it might turn out to be a cuss word. And people get, and the thing about text is you can send it meaning one thing and they'll read it and they, it means something else to them and they get mad about it. Yeah. You ever had that happen? And they take it all wrong. I'm not sure we're better off with all that junk. Well, maybe I am sure we are not better off. We are not better than we was 20 years ago when we didn't have somebody. Like somebody advertised this, they said, um, uh, and it didn't come out right, they said, for sale. Bulldog will eat anything, loves children. <laughs> now see, you didn't, he didn't mean it like that, but that's the way it come across, amen. I said, for sale, a high chair for baby with broke leg. It wasn't for a baby with a broke leg. They said uh, the high chair had a broke leg. Now, you, you got to be careful. And I'll tell you something else. Before you get mad and blow your stack and cuss somebody out there, say, well, I sent him a text and he didn't even answer me. We might have been in Timbuktu. We didn't have no certain phone, might have been dead. You should have seen what he said to me. You've got to understand the sin. People get mad over the least little old things anymore. One uh, lady told a preacher one day, she said, now, I do get mad, but I get over it quick. He said, well, so does a shotgun. Yeah. Boom! And somebody gets hurt. Just because you get over it quick, that's no reason to brag on yourself like you're some kind of saint, brother. Listen, the Bible said that the Bible said be you angry and sin not. You might get aggravated. You get mad at your husband or wife. Or Don't let it turn into a sin. Count to 50 before you speak. If you're really mad, count to 100 and then don't speak because you'll say something you don't mean. Next, it said don't steal. It said don't steal. Isn't it odd? You've heard me say it over and over and over. My mom said this. said, Danny, don't take a bobby pin that ain't yours. Don't take a bobby pin. Every time I see a bobby pin, I think of her. I mean, if it's, if it's laying in the floor in somebody's house, mom said, don't take a bobby pin that ain't yours. I, if I go to the car wash and there's a quarter in there, I just leave it laying there. Because mom said, it ain't yours, don't take it. Let him that stole steal no more. He said, well, that ain't stealing. I found it. Well, that, that may be true. I'll I, I leave it alone. If I found a $100 bill in my yard, I would quote that verse that I love so well. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. <laughs> That's in my version too. Tell the truth, control your anger, don't steal. And then he said, talk clean. Talk clean. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. The best way to talk clean is live clean. The best way to not cuss is don't let cuss. Whatever you hear gets in you. If you sit around three or four nights a week and watch TV and movies that have cursing in them, you're going to cuss. You know why? It's in you. You hear the Bible all day long, you'll start quoting Bible. You hear good music all day long, you'll start saying, you're, you're just like a computer, you're just like a sponge. And a kid, Lord, they pick up everything they hear, everything. Lord, your kids soak it up like a sponge, people. Put the Word of God on in your house. Put preaching on in your house. I appreciate my wife, Kelly, over there, she, been, she does it most of the time, but all the time here lately. She's been having preaching on. Man, when I come in, I can hear it before I even come in the house. She got Charles Lawson in there thundering, preaching in the house. You say, Brother Danny, y'all really listen? Yes, sir. You need preaching to help you think straight, to help you th have the right way of looking at things, to help you get rid of sin. You don't turn secular radio on all day long and listen to the world's junk and then just come to church and get you a little spiritual dose and expect that's gonna last you all week long. Brother, whatever you put in there is gonna come out of you, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. And I feel sorry for you if you work in a place 
where they have bad music and cussing. And I feel sorry for you. All you can do is say, Lord, protect me, protect me, protect me, and stand your ground. Say, so look, we listened to y'all station yesterday. We're going to listen to mine today. Okay? And I ain't talking about milk like 106.9. Soured milk, most of that. You heard me. I'm talking about old-fashioned gospel singing, Bible preaching. Them kids are smarter than you think they are. I saw that story last night. This man, woman come in and lives at somebody's house. Little girls are on the floor playing and a man and woman's talking and that woman said, that's not a very P-R-E-T-T-Y little G-I-R-L. And she's about that high and she looked up and she said, no, but she is very S-M-A-R-T. <laughs> they soak it up, buddy. They're listening more than you think they are. Your kids are listening more than you think they are. Put off the old man. And then, and then it said, have the right attitude. Grieve not the spirit. I don't have time to get in all these things. You follow the Holy Spirit all day long. The devil can't get in your life. You follow the Holy Ghost all day long. The devil will get, not be able to get in your life. Amen. I was prayed the other day. We come down here. I played ball. Played basketball at the early ball. Sometimes we go there and run at 6 o'clock in the morning, and, uh, and I was going home, and I stopped the truck stop there in Nebo. And a little old boy come up. He looks like he's about 20 years old, but he's pitiful looking. He had weird colored hair and glasses, and he just come running up to me. I don't know why that happens to me all the time. I guess, I guess the Lord, I'm, a, I'm a, like a light, and bugs are drawn toward me. And, and I, I was standing there, and this guy, come, he come walking up, and he said, Hey, can I use your phone charger? Mine's dead and my car's tore up and I can't find my brother and, and I, can't, I, can't, I can't get nothing, no, no uh, answer from him. And I said, man, I don't know if yours is the same as mine. He said, do you have an Apple one? I said, I don't know, it's Walmart. And he, he said, uh, well, my charger, he said, I don't think it'll fit you. So I gave him, a, I was gonna give him a track and witness to him. And I said, you know, the Lord loves you. And I started getting a car. And he said, why'd you say that? And I said, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I tell everybody that. I'm a preacher. I tell everybody the Lord loves them. He said, I need to hear that today. And he asked me where our church was. And I showed him. I told him. And I told him how to get here and all that. And you know what? I would have never done that if I hadn't have been praying and reading my Bible and put the new man on that morning. I do read my Bible and pray before I go to six o'clock ball. I do. I get up at five, read my Bible, pray, and, and so, you know why? So I can be put on the new man. Every day you get up, the old man will come back and try to get on board, put him off, and put on the new man. If you don't want the devil in your life, have the right attitude. Look at all that stuff. Bitterness, wrath. You know, just being bitter at somebody We'll leave the door open so the devil can get in your home. Did you know just being mad, clamor, evil speaking, gossip? Did you know just being hateful? I don't understand Christians a lot of time. We think, oh, Lord, we don't get drunk, buddy. We don't smoke pot. We don't commit adultery and stay hateful all the time. All of us, we're all guilty. Oh, hateful grouch. Funny how hateful you can be to your husband you know why? But then somebody calls you, you can suddenly turn it on, can't you? And I was just, honey, would you like to, leave me alone, I got a headache. Honey, I'll, just quit. Shut up. Then the phone rings. Oh, hey. Yes, I'll, I'll be. Went, Lord, you talk about a hypocrite. You say, you say, I'm supposed to be nice. Yeah, you're supposed to be nice to your husband and wife too. The altar's gonna be open here in just a minute for everyone to get down here and get around. That's how the devil gets in her home. One lady, I told a lady, I said, well, you mean, you, he, said, he said, she's nice to her boss and fusses at me. Said, she's nice to her boss at work. She said, well, I get paid to work. I said, you know what they call women that do stuff just because they get paid for it? She didn't like that too good. And I said, be kind. I'm closing, 32. I'm just teaching this morning. I, I don't ever do this on Sunday morning. Be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God, 
for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Do, do, do. Remember that song? Carrie learned that in school, and I never forgot it. She learned it in school. That'll get me on my mind all day. Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Do, do, doodly do. Ephesians 432. They taught her that in, her, in Christian school. <laughs> and that's a true verse. Be kind. If you've got the devil in your heart or in your life, here's what you need to do. Put that old man off. Put the new man on and say, I refuse to let that old man run my life. Neither give place. He'll get in enough sneaking in. For heaven's sake, don't open my door and let him in. That's what that verse means. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed.